Hello students, in this video, we'll show that certain sequences do not have a limit and that if a sequence does have a limit, the limit must be unique. Let's first by starting by showing that the limit must be unique. Let's suppose that a sequence a n, n goes from 1 to infinity, converges to both A and B. Let's let epsilon be greater than 0. Then there is a pair. There's n1 of epsilon and n2 of epsilon such that such that two things are true now, such that the first thing that is true is that a n minus a can be made less than epsilon if n is bigger than n1 of epsilon. And two, a n minus b is less than epsilon if n is bigger than or equal to n2 of epsilon. Now what I'll do is the following. I will set n of epsilon to be the larger, so the maximum, of n1 of epsilon and n2 of epsilon. So in particular, we can note that n epsilon is bigger than or equal to both n1 of epsilon and n2 of epsilon. Okay, great. So now, let's look at the difference between A and B. Now, if I look at the absolute value of A minus B, A minus B, I'm going to artificially add in zero here, so I'm going to do A minus AN plus AN, so I haven't changed anything, I just added and subtracted the same thing, minus B, and now I'm going to group these two terms together and group these two terms together and use the triangle inequality, so the triangle inequality says that this is less than or equal to the length of the first difference, a minus a n, plus the second difference, b minus b n. Now, a minus a n is less than epsilon if we're bigger than n1, and a n minus b n, that should be a b n, that should be an a n, not b n, but an a n. There's an a n over there, not b n. So I have a minus a n minus and then a plus a n. And now we know what? We know that a n minus a is less than epsilon if we're bigger than n1, and a n minus b is less than epsilon if we're bigger than n2. So these expressions are less than epsilon plus epsilon, which is 2 epsilon if n is bigger than or equal to n epsilon, which is the larger of those two. So this will be less than epsilon provided that we're bigger than n1, which we certainly are. And this will be less than epsilon provided we're bigger than n2, which we certainly are. So what we have here is now our conclusions the following. Hence. For any epsilon greater than 0, we have that the difference between a and b is less than 2 epsilon. So 2 epsilon is an arbitrarily small number, so the difference, the distance between a and b can be made arbitrarily small. So the distance between a and b can be made arbitrarily small. If the distance between two numbers can be arbitrarily small, those numbers have to be the same. This implies, hence, a is equal to b. And since a is equal to b, that means that the limit is unique. So convergent sequences have unique limits. Now, an application of that, this is very, very useful because we're going to start talking about subsequences eventually. But if we consider a n to be equal to, let's say, negative 1 to the n, 
And so what does this sequence look like? This sequence looks like a, when, when n is equal to 1, I have a negative 1, then a 1, then a negative 1, then a 1. This is blinking between negative 1 and 1. It's the prototypical example of something where we have a periodic or an oscillatory behavior forever, right? So what's happening with the sequence? Well, it looks like the odd terms, the first term, the third term, the fifth term, the seventh term, the ninth term, all the odd terms are negative 1. So in other words, odd terms are negative 1, and the even terms are 1. Okay, So if the sequence was to converge, for infinitely many, for n arbitrarily large, for arbitrarily large values of n, I know the sequence can be made, put, made close or identically equal to negative 1. However, for also for other arbitrarily large values of n, it can be made identically equal to 1. So there's no way that I can interpolate between 1 and negative 1. That's the rough idea. We can, of course, formally prove that. But this sequence over here will not converge. So the sequence. An which is negative one to the n does not converge. You can use this exact same argument to prove that that doesn't converge. It's a good exercise to try to replicate this argument for the uniqueness of limits to prove that the sequence doesn't converge. But we can sort of see roughly that the even terms are all equal to 1, so they're close to 1. And the odd terms are all close to negative 1. So we're going between 1 and negative 1, which means infinitely often we're not close to for all the values of n past a certain threshold, we're not arbitrarily close to exactly one of those values. Thank you very much.